So, so we have seen the built-in namespace, module namespace, and function local namespace. So namespace containing all the built-in names is created when we start the Python interpreter and exist as long we don't exit. So we have seen this built-in namespace like mean, max, it, is, it comes under the built-in namespace. And each module creates its own global namespace. So each module creates its own global namespace and function creates a local namespace. Again, this until and unless your interpreter start, uh, an interpreter to it, uh, these namespace will be there. Here, until and unless your function call, uh, when the function call, the namespace creates and when the function return a value, uh, or it uh, the function uh, generate exception that time uh, up to that moment the namespace create okay the python uh, we, so here actually whatever we have discussed we'll see The same thing practically. Just a minute, wait, it will take a time. Meanwhile, I want to tell you actually that your test has been scheduled on tomorrow and it will be uh, there from morning uh, 10 a.m. to night 10 a.m. So, good amount of time is there to attempt a test as well uh, only the 10 questions are there and 30 minutes uh, time allocation is there but sincerely try to attempt a test and after this test i will arrange one practical based test in which you have to implement the program so i'm working on that i will check how actually it will possible okay so we are talking about the namespace so up to here we have seen like uh, for example we can say this is a namespace for example this is a name and in this namespace suppose is a namespace so whenever you assign a value it bound with the assigned variable so this namespace is actually the mapping with the object so here we can see suppose this is the x here is the x and here suppose it map with value 3 okay so whenever you assign it will map with the 3 so here we can say this name is associated with this value, with this name. After that, suppose if in a Python you have written like this, x is equals to 3. Again, in the next statement, suppose if you are writing x is equals to, for example, 7. So that in that case, what will happen uh, here? This assignment change from three to seven. Is 
this assignment change from two to three. So actually, what you could understand here, this is your names. This is your names, as we have seen. If names is a collection, uh, and this is the object. So this names assigned with the object, and this is the memory location. So here we see, suppose if you are changing uh, their assignment from 30 to 7, that, that time what will happen? Suppose uh, now here if it is a 7, but suppose if I'm changing it from 7 to suppose 9.2. Simply I'm changing here 7 to 9.2, okay. So C in a C, in a C language, you have to define it to integer, then you have to uh, assign it to the float. But what we are using here, x is equals to 3, then x is equals to 7, now x is equals to 9.2, and then suppose x is equals to ni and 9. In that case, you will find the memory space is the same, that this name is the same. Name is the same for all the object, even though it is integer, it is a float or it is a uh, string. So, now suppose the same example, if we we'll check here, x is equals to three. X is equals to three. And suppose I bring ID of X. So see here, this ID, ID we use for the memory location. So actually here we get uh, this memory location for this X. Suppose uh, instead of, I x suppose i am writing three so we'll see the same memory location or it would be different so here see the memory location is same six zero six four suppose as we discussed earlier suppose that now x is earlier it was x is equals to three and if we look over previous example now x is equals to seven and suppose i'm here using id is x See here the memory location. Uh, here the memory location change because at three is at an, one memory location, at seven is at another memory location. And suppose if I will add x is equals to x plus two, and then we'll see the memory location. So, uh, so actually here you will come to know how the uh, space is created for the different uh, values. And no matter if it is uh, integer or float or it is uh, a string, suppose if it is a float value, So for every type of uh, uh, data, it will create the space. See ya. Now the second thing that we want to discuss about the uh, about the scope. So actually, uh, again briefly, we will discuss about the scope, but we will see in detail later uh, when we'll discuss the different programs. But we'll see in briefly how the scope. Uh, 
what is a uh, variable scope in python so the scope is the portion of a program from where a namespace can be accessed directly without any prefix so actually the scope is a portion of the program the scope is a portion of the program so we for for example here what is the scope of this function so for this function what is the scope of this function this statement also belongs to this function this statement is also belong to this function and this statement also belongs to this function but here this a is equals to 10 we removed the space obviously this statement is not belongs to this function so we can say the scope of this function is from this statement to this statement again if you are talking about the scope of this function it belongs to only this statement belongs to this function so we can say the scope scope is a portion of a program so we can say this scope is a portion of this program this is another portion of the program this is a third portion of the program from where a namespace can be accessed a namespace we have seen the namespace how at the memory location the memory allocated for a different the values or the variable okay so uh, like x is equals to 3 x is equals to 10 and if you are checking id of 10 id of x id of 3 id of x you will you will come to know how the different name be allocated so space is allocated for the different the name and we can access these values directly without any prefix so we'll see in the program so at any given moment there are at least three nested scopes so in any program we will find there is a three scopes nested scopes present uh, for in the program like scope of the current function which has a local name so for the function which has a local name a scope of the module which has a global name and outermost scope which has a built in names so local name global name and built in names already we have seen in our the previous concept that is a namespace now we'll see the program based on this okay so here suppose the program is like uh, outer function so i am creating a different function so i hope you know this uh, colon we use if you want to add a statement in between this function we use a space and here we use a colon so if this colon works as like a open curly bracket and when we will remove this space it works as a closed curly bracket it is like this okay so here uh again one more function So if you are actually using interpreter, it will take automatically proper space. You no need to add a space in Python whenever you are creating block. Now here we will print a. And we call in a function. we call router function
Okay. So actually uh, here, A is equals to 10. Simply I have printed, uh, so simply I have assigned a value of a 10 uh, for the A. So namespace created for the A. A is equals to 10. Now print A. So what will be the output? A, 10. Because directly I'm printing value of 10 here. Then what I am doing here, I am calling this outer function. So outer function call here. So this outer function call be called. In actually Python, we use def before the function definition, short form of def. And this uh, colon, as already I told you, it is uh, colon is like you can say it is open curly bracket. And whenever you remove this space, it is like here is a closed curly bracket. For this function, actually here, this function is in after this space, so obviously this function belongs to this function. Suppose if I will remove this space, obviously uh, the close curly bracket will be here. So actually you can say this function closing here only, but here it is inside this function. Okay, so, so, so first here, actually the 10 printed, print A10, then outer function called. So we come came to here in outer function. Uh, now here I have written global A. So why? Because I want to change this value, this value, the global value, that is A is equals to 20. So whenever you are writing here the global, that time only you can change the value. So here actually we are creating a global namespace. So a is equals to 20. Now here we change the value that is a is equals to 20. Now inside then this inner function, inner function called. So this inner function called and this global a, a is equals to 30. So see here and after that we are printing a. So here the output is 30. After that, after this inner function call, the next statement is print A. So it would be printed 30. And outside also, it would be 30. So why the 20 is not there? Because again, we have changed here, global A. So you will come to know in detail or when you will practice, you will properly understand. Uh, like see here, again, this value changed. 10, 30, 2020 because as you moved global namespace global from here as you move this global name here so it is it, this uh, uh, is you can say it is a local namespace for the function this is a local namespace for the function that's why for this statement the value is 30 value is 30 and outside of this function for this and this print statement, the value is what? The value is 20. So value is 20. So you might have understand properly the difference between the, the global, local, as well as the scope of the function. Here you will understand properly what is the scope of this function. The scope of this function is limited to here only. And obviously here it is not the global A. That's why for this, it has printed the value 30. And suppose if I am writing here, that is global A, then 10, 30, 30, right? Earlier it was 10, 30, 20, 20. So I hope you might have understand this concept. Uh, until and unless you program uh, program the same thing and you will practice, you cannot properly understand. If you you have not done any workshop on Python or you have not implemented any program, so you should practice on this so that you will properly understand the difference between built-in namespace, module and global namespace and function local namespace. As well here in this concept, you will understand what is the scope of function. Okay, so the next concept is flow control. Already you have used this flow control concept in your C programming. 
so already you are aware with if else statement and the uh, flow control statement for loop while loop break and continue right but we'll see briefly how we use this statement in python if statement no need to discuss in detail but we'll see if this expression and the statement like this this is the syntax like here you use you have to use this colon so in a for loop in the do while in a function you have to use this one in a c programming you use open curly bracket and close curly bracket right in python here we have to use this colon and you have to provide a space if you want to add a statement below belongs to this uh, function or this if statement so you have to add a space here whenever you remove the space obviously that statement will not belongs to this statement or the function this expression so python interprets uh, non zero values as a true and none and zeros are interpreted as a false so here you will check the test expression what is your test expression you have written in a if statement if x is less than of 9 or if it is a true this body will execute if it is a false it will move to the next statement the same syntax you have used in a uh, uh, in your c programming so the same program we will see like here number is equals to 3 and if number is greater than 0 print number is a positive number if it is the less than 0 uh, uh, this uh, this is always printed so we'll see the same program like suppose the same example we we'll see here num is equals to 3 and if num is greater than 0 colon we use a colon automatically it will take a space print number is a positive number I remove the space, but obviously it will outside this print statement. Uh, always, so it will always print it because for this statement there is no any kind of condition. So I will print p is a positive number. Right? Suppose if I am giving minus one. Always print, right? Only the always printed. So here we check if a number is greater than zero, then whatever statement you are writing with this space, all the statement belongs to this condition. So simple concept. The next one is if else. Here in if else. i hope you you might have used the same thing in the c programming many times you have used if else so if then test expression then body of if if it is not satisfied then it will move to the else part so simple test expression if it is a true this body will execute if it is a false then the else part the else part body will execute and then it will move to the next statement like here now we are checking the same program the same program we are using number is equals to 3 if number is greater than or equal to 0 the number is positive or zero else print negative number so here the same program we can make a change here the number is equals to 3 and if the number is greater than or equal to Zero, then print number is positive number, and then else part. 
again if it is a new block that it has having a different scope so again in the else part we write it as print number is a negative number is a negative number the same program in the earlier program i want to, i want to check only the positive number but here uh, i have make a change either it is a positive number or a zero same thing it will display three is a positive number or zero if it is zero again the same three is a zero is a positive number or zero and again if it is a minus five the minus five is a negative number so very simple okay so those who haven't practiced uh, in the c programming they have to practice even though program is very very small those who are very good in the programming for them the concepts are really very simple but all these students uh, i want to tell you you should practice on the list tuple uh, whatever the, the concept the string we have discussed in our uh, the last to last lecture you have to practice all practice on these concept very soon we are going to start the practical also so in practical we'll uh, see all the concept the practically will implement all these concepts in the practicals like we have seen a list we have seen a tuple but actually we have not seen how to add a element in a list how to add element uh, in a tuple uh, we haven't seen or if suppose if you want to delete a element from the list how actually we can delete a element from the list how to update a list how to sort a list uh the different set operation like union insertion uh, inter intersection all these uh, different types of operation we can perform in the practical so really uh, all the practicals are very important for you because uh, in the next semester when you will be in the college i want to tell you we are going to plan one test for all second year students and from the second year students i will choose uh, around 20 students those who are really good in the python and these 20 students will get the opportunity to join machine learning on the course around it is we can say it is around uh, within two years i have planned you can implement around 20 uh, 15 to 20 projects in in that uh, in that program so this is the program that we have planned but only the 20 students will get this opportunity in which uh, uh, you will have to implement uh, machine learning projects really you will enjoy group uh, we are planning to choose around 40 students from the third year and again 20 students from the final year and in this way we have planned to make one group and then we, i will first we will provide a training to you so uh, professor pankaj kasar sir shakil pinjari sir and me we have plan for all you people but only the students those who are really good in the python they will get this opportunity mainly what we will do we will arrange one test and in that test those who will score a good those whose concepts are really good in which we will ask some theoretical questions as well as some uh, we will assign some program to you and those who will able to implement the program all these students will get the opportunity So actually, here all we people are working on different domain. Like I am working on the text analysis, and uh, Pankaj Kasar sir is working on the image processing, like medical image processing, and uh, Shikil Pinjaj sir is working on the medical, the uh, the different machine learning projects. So actually, you will get the opportunity to learn uh, the, the different projects from the different areas. and it is a really good opportunity after your graduation in the us you may you may have around 5 to 10 project that you how you were self implemented and the year dip the project will be very good so actually you will get this opportunity but the condition is what you have to utilize this time you have to utilize this opportunity so uh, actually you prepare well 
this Python programming. You might have uh, not sincere in C programming, but uh, if you are very sincere in Python programming, really you will be benefited. If you search on Google, which pro uh, programming having a good uh, scope in the market or the job perspective, like their salary packages, their job opportunity, you will find that Python is booming year every year every year. The Python, uh, the the uh, we can see the market uh, contribution ratio increases. Okay, so the concepts are really uh, very simple, which is very similar to the USC programming. Uh, the next concept is so if else statement we have seen if else if else if else statement if else if else statement now here suppose if you are testing uh, some expression if condition is there and this is the body of if so if it is not satisfied then it will check the another body that is else if so we write here like el if else if el if then the second x test expression again if it is not satisfied then it will move to the third body that is the else part that is body of else so here the test expression of if either it will if it is a true it will move to it will execute this body if it is a false it will move to the next else if if it is again true it will move to this part if it is a false it will move to the the last body so the practically here the same program we are uh, looking here the number is equals to 3.4 if the number is greater than zero it will print the positive number else if if it is a uh, number is equal to zero it will print to zero else to print it is a negative number so uh, the same example actually we are looking here in which actually properly we are getting output in our previous example we are getting only the number is a positive number okay then we have used a pels in which actually we can divide in two parts like the number is a positive number or zero and or it is a negative number suppose if you want to divide it into three parts like either it is positive zero or negative in that case we have to use that is else if else if okay the same thing suppose here the number is for example 3.4 the same example is that the number is greater than zero the number is greater than zero then the number is a positive number then The next block that is else if e l e in which we'll check if the number is equals to zero, then we use a colon, then automatically it will take a space. If you are using an interpreter, then print number is a zero. Else the number is a negative number so if you will so 3.4 is a positive number if i'm here it is zero so it is zero is a zero and if it is a negative number so it is five so it is negative number so in a c also the concept is the same but only the thing is in a c program suppose if you want to implement the same program you have to import uh like hash include stdio then y domain and then open curly bracket so number of things you have to write but here in python directly you can write in one statement and you can execute the program so it feels it is a simple programming uh, compared to the c language the next one is the next concept is that is a nested if so we have seen if if else if else if and else now we'll see the nested if in nested if suppose if you want to take uh, the input a number of time like here suppose number is equals to float input enter a number so you are taking input from the user so input and as we know already we have discussed 
in python always it the python by default it will check your input as a string but if you want to check a input as an integer or float you have to assign here or here so here we have a sign that is float is a float input and a number so whatever number input you are giving it will assign to this number so if number is greater than 0 if it is greater than 0 Greater than or equal to zero, then it will move here. If number is equal equal to zero, print zero. Else, it print a positive number. Or if it is uh, less than zero, it will directly move to this else part and print a negative number. Okay. The same. And these are saying here the message is. Num is equal to you have to remember this. How actually suppose if you want to take input, this is the syntax that you have to remember. Then if number is greater than zero, greater than or equal to. Yeah. Then only it will move to this part. Otherwise, directly it will move to the else part. If number is equal to zero, then print zero. Else, but then. Positive number. See, I am removing this space. Obviously, it, the scope end here. It will move to the else part and print negative number. We'll execute this. It will. Number is greater than or equal to zero. If a number equal equals to zero, print zero. I'll print positive number. One two one two. Okay, so suppose here the number is eight, so if the number is a positive number, suppose if the number is, for example, zero, the number is zero. If the number is, if the number is minus four, then it is a negative number. So it said this is the concept of nested. Either it is, if check first, we check here, uh, it is. Less than zero, or greater than zero, or equal to zero, and directly it will either move this part or directly this part. Similarly, yeah, uh, here here is another program to check if a number is odd or even. Like so, we can do this like way if the number. Why we have written a float? So already we have discussed now. If in a Python, it will by default it will check the value as a string. So here actually we want to use a number. So that's why I have used float here. You can use integer, no problem. But accordingly, you have to put integer value over there because if you are not writing this, it will check the by default the value. Has a string. Suppose I'm printing here this number. So here, when you suppose I'm entering this eight, see, 
I got this error message. Why? I have put it eight now, but I got this error message because by default it has taken as a string. Suppose if I will write integer. And I am giving the same input that is eight, the program will execute without any error. Because enter number eight, output also eight, and number is a positive number. This is the reason I have written here float. Even though actually I have not put a float value over there. But you can understand. If you either it is for the integer float for any value, except this side I have put a float over there. So by default, your input is as a string as a string in python but here i want to take input as an integer value or float value that's why i have to write here integer or float i hope you might have understand this concept okay so number is odd or even you this modulus you know uh, the meaning of this uh, modulo, modulus operator in C, you might have used this. What is the difference between percentage and this modulo? The percentage gives you division, uh, the, the answer, whatever if you want to answer, and if you want to, uh, if you want to check the remainder, that we use this modulo. So, whatever number if you are giving, it will divide it by the two. And if the your remainder is zero, then the, your number is even. If you will get the remainder non-zero value, obviously it is odd. So simple program is. And here we have used a format, right? To format to actually to display your output is like your number is here and it is even or it is odd. Like number, for you enter value three, so three is odd. If you have entered two, two is even. We have used here format to display the output. Uh, so the next one is the Python for loop. So mainly the loop, uh, you know, when we use this loop, suppose if you want to iterate the uh, uh, iterate the uh, or of sequence again and again, like in a for loop, a do while, you might have used in C programming for loop do while. The same sequence if you want to iterate a number of times. Similarly, in Python, we have seen list, tuples, string. You want to enter a number of values. So actually, in that case, we have to iterate the same thing again and again. Suppose if you are taking the input from the user again and again, that time we use this loop. So iterating over sequence is called traversal. So here is this is the syntax for value in sequence body of for so actually in your uh, c programming your for loop syntax is different like for i is equals to zero i is less than of uh, for example 10 i plus plus this things number of time you have used but here the the concept is same the purpose is same the for loop purpose is same only the syntax is different now here suppose i'm using a for loop so numbers so here i have used a list in the list they, these are the different numbers are there in the list and one more variable that is some variable is there in which i have created a value uh, zero now for value in the numbers so this number this is name of this list and value is like to an i like for i equal to zero, right now, for i equal to zero, i is less than of 10, i plus plus. So in the array, your index value, for example, you start from the zero, zero, one, two, three, four. So zero, one, two, three, four is nothing but the ith value, right? So similarly, this is the list, in this list, at, this is the index value, zero. This is the index value one, this is the index value two, so this index value, you can say this is a value. This is the value, VAL. That is the same variable. Like in a C, you use many times I, right? That is like VAL. In, in the name of a list, that is a numbers, so numbers. So for value in a numbers, 
sum is equals to sum plus value. So by default it is zero. So obviously I want to add all these elements. I want to add all these numbers, whatever in the numbers list. So simple formula, you know, sum is equals to sum plus value, and print the summation is. So by this way, initially it will take a six, six plus zero, six again, six plus five, eleven, eleven plus three, fourteen, fourteen plus eight. By this way, 22, and at the at the end you will get the answer. That is, the sum is 48. This way you will get the answer. So in a for loop, there is another concept that is a range. So in a range, we have to specify the range. Uh, like a range is start from the zero and stop up to the 10. And step size. It means after the step size means I want to choose the first element, then the third element, then fifth element, and seven element. So that time actually I will use this step size. Suppose I want to choose the first element, third element, then right in this way. So this this is you can say this is a step size. So step size by default to one if not provided. So earlier actually we have not provided. So by default. The step size is one, so it has taken all the values, all the values. If it is a two, so it will take always the next value. So this function does not store all the values in the memory. So here you can properly understand the meaning, uh, like print range ten. So here is the output. You will get the range zero to ten. Suppose if you will print list range 10. So you will get the complete list 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 10 value. So the complete list will be printed. Now here is start node and stop node. So 2 and 8. Here we have seen the start and stop. So this is the start and this is the stop. So obviously it will start from 2. Uh, sorry, it will start from 2. And It is two to eight now, so it will start from two and it will increment it up to the eighth value. So it will print it up to the seven. And the next one is two. This is a start node and this is a stop node, and step size is a three. So here you will find from zero, zero, one, two. So two is here, three, four, and then five is here, six, seven, then eight is here, nine, ten, and then eleven is here. Right? 14 and 17. So this this things that you have to remember. This is your start node. This is a stop node, and this is a step size. Okay, so time is over. So we'll stop here. You have another lecture. So all the concepts are very simple. Whatever we have discussed today, we have seen the concept of namespace. In which we have discussed built in namespace, the global namespace, and local namespace. Then we have discussed uh, if statement, if else, if else, if, then else, nested if, right? Then the different, the loop statement, like for loop statement, and the range, how to specify range. Okay? So you practice on all these concepts. Tomorrow you have, you have a test a schedule on Moodle. So remember, uh, set alarm on your mobile phone because this time again I will not reschedule the test for you. Set alarm on your mobile phone. Today you have to appear for the test. A good amount of uh, time I have provided you from, from morning 10 a.m. to uh, night 10 p.m in which only the 10 questions are there 30 minutes are required okay so and very soon i will arrange one programming test so you prepare all the concept uh, this unit will finish within one or two lecture okay thank you now you can leave the session if you have a doubt you can ask me other those who understood they can leave the session the session is over thank you